afternoon. I'm 12 Spies. And we're going to be doing a Let's Play of Hearts of Iron 4, where we take a look at some of the more obscure countries. And to start it off, we're going to go with Bolivia. So we're going to dive into the game. I am running two mods, the Road to 56 and Increased Resources. So let's get this thing set up. We're going to be doing Iron Man mode on regular. And we're going to keep the historical AI focuses the same. Now this is my actual third playthrough as Bolivia. As the microphone that I was using really wasn't up to par. And one of the things that I've noticed about some of these smaller countries is when you begin to delve into them, they, they play much slower in the initial phase. Now when you get to making war on other countries, it becomes a little different. Um, you can slow the game down and it gets really interesting. My initial playthrough with Bolivia is that it, it's not easy by any means. So we'll start off with technology and generally I've liked to take basic machine tools as well as electronic mechanical engineering largely because they're behind the eight ball. They start off with two research slots compared to some other countries that have three and four. And one of the things that you'll notice is that the infrastructure in Bolivia is not exactly great. You start with 1 out of 10 in Santa Cruz and 3 out of 10 in La Paz. Santa Cruz is primarily very, very dense jungle. La Paz, you have a little bit of jungle. You get a mountainous region. And then in the southwestern corner of Bolivia, you have the north part of the Atacama Desert. So we're going to attempt to build some roads. Now, another thing that I've noticed about Bolivia is they start off non-aligned. And I know that I want to take them fascist. I want to be able to play as the aggressor. So the first national focus that we are going to take is open the political sphere. Sign all our units into an army. Get our free commander. Who is Jose Miguel Sotomayor. And we will go ahead and move our troops. Because Paraguay will be our first target. Speaking of troops, we have low manpower, which we know. We'll go ahead and begin to train two sets of divisions. We'll take a look at our military factories. We start off with one. That's another part that makes playing as Bolivia difficult. You start off with one military factory and six civilians of which three are designated to consumer goods because of your governmental policies, which you start off with volunteer only, export focus, and a civilian economy. So we will go ahead and speed this up. And initially what I've found is that 
the first four, uh, not four, but first the first year, and sometimes even up to a year and a half, it's really slow. It's about getting the economy on track, getting the technology researched. And in this case, I want to prep for war with Paraguay. They start off communists. And in my earlier runs, it proves to be quite the fight. Primarily because they throw bigger numbers than you and you're fighting in the jungle. And I originally recorded about five episodes, but realized that the audio just wasn't up to snuff. It didn't sound good. Um, but it was very entertaining because I essentially fought about a year and a half war and outmaneuvered them. But, it, it, you know, at first I thought it looked like a perpetual stalemate. So we'll get there and maybe make some interesting choices along the way. And ultimately, with the Let's Try, if it turns out that it's a fail, it's a fail. But to kind of set goals, because that's one of the things I like about Hearts of Iron, is you can you can take any nation, any faction, and say, well, I want to win as the Allies. Or, and by win, I mean, you know, basically beat the German Reich. And in this case, as Bolivia, we want to take out Paraguay and then take out the northern part of the country challenge Argentina, wipe out Chile, Uruguay, and then hopefully take on Brazil. But we get our first world event, the remilitarization of the Rhineland. And while that is worrying, it is not worthy, worrying to our small yet humble country in the middle of South America. Now I have, you know, I'm relatively new to the Hearts of Iron series. I'm not new in the form of watching videos, but I'm new as a player. Um, I find many of them very intriguing, especially the AI-only battles. And we may get to a point where we do that, but I do enjoy playing it. And this game is right up my alley. We've got about 15 days left on the Open the Political Sphere. This should hopefully get us in a position to be able to take some technology or really some national focus trees that will increase our manpower, give us more political power, let us reform the government, and then we'll begin to focus on production through civilian and military factories. Because it's a pretty bare bones start. Now go with passive changes and with our newfound political power we are going to modify our government. While I would like to get to parcel mobilization, unfortunately we are we don't meet the qualifications to do so. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add a that's always tough what to do, what to do. we're going to t pick up a uh, fascist demagogue and basically said the higher ups may harbor some unspoken sympathies towards fascism that's right Mr. Saranzo I'm not sure that we can really love your non-aligned government we're gonna fix that real quickly still progressing down the tech slot so 
we're going to, once we get electronic mechanical engineering, I believe we will pick up another industrial tech and then from there begin to shift towards getting weapons that are current with 1936. I have to assume that the army is still fighting with World War II level weapons or World War I, not World War II. Which probably won't bode well for us, but hopefully we can make a little bit of a dent. And we're going to take construction. It'll take us 186 days. And construction's a great tech because it will increase your construction speed and your factory repair speed. Now one of the things you've probably noticed is we have zero manpower right now and some of that is a byproduct of the fact that we have volunteerism only with our we can go ahead and modify the government now actually we can address that issue so we will up this to limited conscription which has now given us a whopping what well, was almost 24,000 now it's dropped to 175 while that doesn't seem like it's great, it now gives us the necessary manpower to start cranking out some divisions, but once again, in a bare bones start, we don't have the military factories to pump out weapons needed for the infantry initially, so we're going to have to wait on that. But one of the biggest pros about playing as Bolivia is your terrain is very defendable. So if you were to encounter an AI that got aggressive, you know, you are fighting in the jungle or the mountains primarily, and you get some pretty stellar defensive bonuses. Thirteen days left on passive change, and then we will go straight towards nationalism. And once we complete that, then we will begin industrial effort, followed by our armament efforts, and then the construction efforts. And then we will focus on the army because right now they're going to be the boots on the ground that enable us to ultimately grow territory and take over Paraguay. We must snuff out communism. We're going to start and take support weapons now, which gives us some basic troop boost. And in the meantime, we can now modify our government and go from a civilian economy to partial... Well, we're not there yet. Hmm. Fascist sympathies in the military. So we've got another event, which if there's enough support, there will be a coup. So we may see a coup in Bolivia, which would be great. We would accomplish our ultimate means. We're going to take lessons of history, reduces division attrition by 5%. And granted, you know, that's really kind of, we're putting things in for the future. Right now, we really can't do a whole lot with the economy until we become fascist. And then we can pick up limited mobilization, which should ease some of the consumer good pressure. And 
And we've got some time on our text as well as some time on our national focus. And let's take a look how the military production is going. Still running a pretty heavy deficit of 2,300 guns needed to reinforce. Oh, and we get another world event. Czechoslovakia starts border fortification project. Things are heating up in Europe. While they remain relatively dull in South America, not a whole lot happening. I have to think that the Spanish Civil War will break out relatively soon. And in every playthrough that I've seen, just about, and in every playthrough that I've done so far, Republican Spain will be defeated, and we will see the one and only Franco. As I said earlier, when you a lot of times when I'm playing some of these smaller countries, it's it's just a very dull start. Not a whole lot to say. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're kind of getting all your pieces in place to begin to make your first move if you're going for, you know, any sort of aggressive territory gain. And so it it, it is a little slow. But it's definitely easy to manage. Because you're not having to do a whole lot. Now, eventually, in future episodes, as we begin to start wars, there will be a little more micromanagement. And I'm not a big fan of the battle plan system. Um, it, it's just, it, it's never really executed as efficiently as I would execute it. So I do tend to micromanage my troops when I fight wars, which has yielded some pretty decent results for me. As well as I've noticed that if you do that, a lot of times you can lure the AI to attack you in places where they're not going to win, and ultimately it'll present fronts where you can make gains on. So we have now taken nationalism, which essentially raises the popularity of fascism to 40% and causes more fascist support. So we're going to go with the industrial effort to open up the armament efforts that also will allow us to further specialize our factories. Um, so the fascist, fascists have now demanded a referendum. We kind of have a couple of options that we can do. We can suppress this movement, we can ignore it, or we can hold a referendum. And I'm all for letting the people vote. And so now, it appears that we have a new leader, De La Vega. And we are now Phalangist Bolivia. We have gone fascist. And the games of the 11th Olympiad have been completed. Everybody can go back to being angry and ready to fight war. construction side of things we are still still plugging away at that <laughs> infrastructure still is not up to par and here we go the Spanish Civil War is kicked off and Italy has defeated Ethiopia all relatively standard for this game I've yet to see one where Ethiopia unless it's controlled you know, by human, where Ethiopia actually survives. So Italy has taken the, I believe it was a kingdom of Ethiopia led by Haile Selassie. And as we scroll over to Spain, we have the Republicans with their capital in Madrid fighting the fascists with their capital in Zaragoza. And it would appear that the fascists are making very quick work of the Republicans up north. I'm sure at some point there will be a playthrough where the Republicans win. You know, statistics say that at some point there has to be one, but 
I've yet to see one. So now we can modify this economy. We're going to pick up partial mobilization only because world tension is not at 15 percent. We should see an improvement in how many guns we can make per day and we do see that they're still cutting into the deficit only having one military factory is a killer though but we're going to remove that very quickly. Very, very quickly. And we should have two more techs that are coming online relatively quickly. After we take construction one, we should get a boost to dispersed industry. And then once we research support weapons one, we will go for weapons one. Let's see how that's going to line up. Nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. We're still struggling <laughs> to get equipment. Hence the reason we haven't created any any new units. But that's going to change shortly. We'll have some more military factories. We'll be able to pump out more guns. And once that does, I believe that we're going to be headed towards a path of being able to engage in war with Paraguay. Which right now, war I believe is still relatively costly. Oh, 120 days. We may go ahead and initiate that just given the fact that it's going to take roughly a third of a year to declare war. So we will go ahead and start justifying those goals. But that took nearly forever. That almost took an entire year to build one layer of infrastructure. Oh, excuse me. Actually, we already built one, so uh, you pretty much spend your first year building two levels of infrastructure. And even then, I mean, you're left at three out of ten, which isn't great. And you'll notice it as troops begin to move through these areas that are very heavily jungle with very low infrastructure, it takes a long time. And that's one of the challenges that I've noticed with a lot of countries in South America is because the infrastructure is not what it is in Europe or in the United States. In this game, it, it just it makes traveling hard. I did one with Costa Rica when I first got the game just to kind of see what they were like and they start off with no army and very limited infrastructure. The same with, you know, Nicaragua, Honduras. Now, San Salvador is interesting to me because they were able to pump out a ton of troops. They do have a little higher population, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Looks like 1.45 million versus a third of that, roughly. 
believe Panama is another difficult start because of population. Bolivia is a very difficult start, very low population. As you can see, versus, well, that's just one area. Eh, 2.3 million, excuse me, not too terribly bad. In fact, it looks like we should. We're actually at a population advantage versus Paraguay. So it is December 1936. We have almost gotten through an entire year and we have accomplished so much. Let me tell you. De La Vega is posturing for war. That's what we want to see. We will go for our second armament effort. Now time to allocate new military factories. And I mean, initially, you see, we can now make two more guns a day, and as we encroach on that production cap, this should greatly help us cut into the deficit that we have. Which, I mean, it's come down significantly. You know, you're looking at, what, 900 some odd guns that we need versus 2,300 when we started out. So, that's always encouraging. Tech-wise, we are close on this first industry. We already have support weapons, which is great. Support equipment, excuse me. We can build an engineer company. Sadly, we don't have the factories to make it. So, I believe what we're going to do is the next tech we're going to pick up is clothing solid color gives us a little boost to defense and a little boost to break through every little bit helps and you can see that when we started out it was nine and some change produced today now it's 11.66 per day so you know as we continue to go on throughout 1937 we are going to be at a point where we will get to a surplus and then we can start training divisions. I'm also hoping that next episode, it looks like we have a little, hmm, almost 40 days left, 43, 42 now, and we will fire up a war with old Paraguay. Right now they just have two divisions stationed. I think that, that we could easily make some progress in there. But in my first playthrough where I actually got entangled into that war, it it was, you know, that I looked down and you know they, they definitely outnumbered me. They were able to out and put more men in the field than I could. And um, it proved relatively difficult to win the war. We ultimately did, but it, it, there were several moments where I was fighting where I, you know, I was about ready to hang it up and it just, it, it looked like a perpetual stalemate or what I was fearful was it looked like a stalemate and they would gain and a stalemate and they would gain and I was losing ground and losing ground. But, um, through some crafty maneuvering, I was able to get around there. So once again, De La Vega is pushing against, uh, Paraguayan communism, which is uh, fine by me, and that will give us the necessary uh, means to declare war and ultimately march to Asuncion. And going forward, I'm going to try to do as many episodes as I can and get to a point where we can kind of test and play with these things. I'm going to kind of keep these episodes around 30 minutes long so they're bearable, they're watchable. Ah, he's moved more troops. We still have the advantage, 
but I have a feeling that if this plays out like last time, we're going to be looking at a situation where they're going to quickly outnumber us, which makes it a little challenging, but also makes it exciting and fun. And I would anticipate that next turn, and really next episode, not next turn, we'll be in a position where we will formally begin the war against Paraguay. So we now, I'm going to slow it down just a bit, we now will pick up, we've completed our second armament effort as well as infantry equipment. So we're going to take construction effort. We will further allocate these two additional factories. And what I think we may do on top of that is we may scale that back and start producing some support equipment because at some point we will add engineers to our division template. And they're immediately telling me that, hey, that's, yeah, you're making the wrong guns. So we're going to go ahead and ramp up with infantry equipment one. We have no template, which we know. And it's 1937. So we will begin to work on improved machine tools. So I'm going to pause it. Modify the government and make a cut. So, we're going to add Army Morale Expert as our Chief of the Army. And like I said, I think we're right around 30 minutes, so we're going to make a cut and call that a good one again. Thank you for joining in, and we will continue next time.